Hey, Switch. Uh, it's Andy Tilly. Glad to be with you guys uh, for Big Switch tonight, but also for the next couple of weeks for our Nothing Off Limits uh, series that we're doing. I told you that there were a lot of questions that came in. Uh, thousands of questions came, and there's no possible way that I can that I can get to all of them. But what I want to do is every time after a Switch event, I want to be able to answer some questions that came in online like this one. Uh, somebody wrote in and asked, how do I tell my parents that I'm pregnant? Um, so obviously we've crossed over the line, boundaries have been broken, and now you're in that awkward state of my parents are going to kill me, you're thinking they're going to disown you, what, you know, I'm sure there's a million different questions that are going on within your head. And I think my best advice that I can give you just off the cuff is you're going to have to tell them eventually, right? I mean, eventually you're going to have to have that communication with them, and this is what I found. If you'll be open and you'll be honest and you'll just talk to them, it's going to be okay. I know right now you feel alone and you feel like, you know, maybe even there's some shame there and some other things. And maybe it was with a guy that you're not even with anymore and you're looking at it and parents, what are they going to say? Uh, I bet you they're going to say they love you and they care for you. And here's the thing. If you're going through this right now as a teenager, you're going to need them. It's going to be that family support system that's going to help you through it. And let me just tell you this. There have been hundreds of thousands of people who are in your same situation. Be honest. Be open. Bring those things to them and watch as your family structure becomes the most important relationship that you have. We'll be praying for you here at Switch and all of our campuses because we know you're in a tough spot. Open the line of communication. Another one uh, come, came, comes in and it says uh, this, is it okay to live with somebody? Uh, in this day and age, whether it's on TV, the media, or around, people are always choosing to live with each other. It's kind of this idea of, well, I'm going to kind of just see if this works, and if it works out, then I'm going to go ahead and go on with it. Um, I would say that that is a bad idea. Can I say within Scripture that it says, do not move into somebody's house that you are not going to marry or you're planning on marrying beforehand? Um, the reality is, is you're going to be put in some situations where some boundary issues are going to come in because most of the time when people live together they sleep in the same bed and I don't know too many people who are sleeping in the same bed who are together as a couple that there's not a lot of tension with what's going to happen in the night. Scripture in Ephesians 5 3 says that there shouldn't be even a hint of sexual immorality and that is more than a strong hint when you're living with somebody who is not your husband or your wife. It's not a good idea. And in fact, statistically, uh, it would say that most people who do that, it doesn't end well. They end up breaking up. Then you've got all sorts of house issues, money issues. You've kind of all ingrained everything together, acted like you were married, but never had the commitment of being married. And so that's where I would lead you on that. Um, another one asks this. They say, uh, uh, what do you do if you're on a date and you fart and she smells it. <laughs> first off, if she's cool with it, you marry her, okay? You marry her first and foremost because most are not. Uh, I would say blame her. Why not, right? Wasn't me. It was obviously her. Or you could go the old, you know, hey, I was driving by. It must have been a skunk, something else. I don't know what it was. First off, if you're busted, own it. Be proud of it. Make a joke about it. Move on with it. Change the subject immediately. If she thinks it's cool and laughs and giggles and gives you a kiss on the cheek, stay with her forever. She was meant to be. She's the one. Next question. Uh, they ask, if, what, what do you do if there's no trust in a relationship? That's good. Um, if you feel like you're with somebody who um, uh, you don't trust them, what they're going to do or say about you, or you don't trust them for your physical safety, or if you don't trust that they're going to gossip or say what you're you know, telling them in confidence, uh, the best advice I can give you is you got to get rid of that person. If you can't trust them, then it's over because all of your relationships are built on trust. And if trust isn't there, the relationship will never work. You can't just pour into somebody and not trust them because then at the end of the day, man, the relationship never works, all right? This is what scripture says, Proverbs 9, 12, it says that if you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. Be wise. If you don't trust them, if you're in this relationship that's just not working because there's the lack of that, be wise. Walk away from the situation. I promise you it will reward you. Um, the last one is kind of interesting. Uh, especially being a guy, and now this is going to be all over the internet, is this, why are guys so obsessed with sex? Great question. Um, let's look at this from a couple of different angles on this deal. Um, the first one that I will say is what we talked about tonight. 
We're sexual people. We were made and created to reproduce. And for many a guy's lives between that 13 to that, you know, 19, 21, 22, they are in the peak of wanting to reproduce. That's just the way it is. It may be unfair. You may not ask for it, but there is a drive within them that is peaking at that time. And so many of them will be thinking about it. That's why a lot of guys look at pornography. That's why a lot of guys are just going from girl to girl to girl to get whatever they want. They're trying to fulfill a need within their life that they can never really fulfill when it's outside the context of marriage. I'll put this uh, little tidbit in your ear as well as this thing is that uh, there's a lot of guys who talk about these things that don't really mean it. If, if lack of better terms, they're just trying to fit in with everybody else. I know a lot of students who they engage in these sexual talks and those types of things, and then you look at it and they are in no, they're, they're in no way that, uh, that way at all. In fact, they're just trying to fit in, and that's just guys talking. Most guys don't want to be in the locker room and hear somebody talking about this and go, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not interested in that. Uh, and then they start getting made fun of. So most of the time, guys will just go along with what everybody else is saying just because they're going along with it. Uh, Genesis uh, 128, remember, said that we're to be fruitful and multiply. Remember, we need to be responsible with that. Not all guys are obsessed with sex. A lot of that is driven by culture. When it's the proper time in the context of marriage, you're going to say, thank you, ladies. My husband is obsessed with sex. So there you have it. Look forward to seeing you for week number two of Nothing Off Limits. We'll be answering a lot more questions, things like, mm, is masturbation a sin or is looking at pornography okay or is it right? Matter of fact, we might even ask you if that's what you do. Look forward to seeing you next week.